All right, so um, so we have the uh, the capability of the controller and the and the view to talk to one another, right? By sending data across each other uh, through the scope, right? So through the dollar sign scope, um, but not only data, right? But also behavior, right? So you can you can um, uh, notify of of, uh, uh, of uh, events that occur on the client side, on the view side by notifying some action that occurs on the controller. Uh, so that, and the, and the way we might uh, do that is that um, we might want to, you know, as we click on a, on a, on a hyperlink or, or we generate any type of event, we would like to notify our uh, parent uh, controller. And the way we do that is going to be by declaring, on the scope, uh, we can declare actions. Right, or, or functions to be invoked when certain, uh, when certain events occur. Right? So for instance, um, you know, if we click on the login page, maybe that's, that's our intent. Right? We want to uh, log in. Right? So we can create, uh, on the scope, we can declare a function that will be invoked if we, uh, for instance, click on the login button. Right? Uh, so, so this might say um, alert. Uh, login, login clicked, right? Uh, and we can we can uh, tie this action to a button or a hyperlink or anything, anything that we wanted to click and generate this action. We can tie it to any element. We can say that if this is clicked, right? If if this uh, hyperlink is clicked, I want to notify my controller by calling the function. That function is called login. I want to invoke it. All right, so that's referencing a function to be invoked on the scope. Right? Uh, so that if we uh, now click on the login, right, we navigate to what? No, that's not what I had intended. Oh, right, we don't want to href. We don't want to navigate right, out of this page. Right? We are overriding that, right? We want to. Uh, have some logic, maybe uh, you know, uh, um, validate uh, username and password, for instance, right? So, all right, so um, we have the controller on the right hand side so, uh, here, uh, where that it's declaring a login function uh, on the scope that is bound uh, on the view uh, to this uh, hyperlink, right? That uh, if we click on this hyperlink. Um, the behavior login function will be uh, invoked uh, on the on the controller. Right? So if we uh, refresh uh, the page, um, we have the alert box right here. The alert uh, command being uh, it's going to be invoked if we if we click on the login. Notice that the indeed we are we are now going to execute the alert on the on that by invoking that function. And there it is. Uh, now these functions can be uh, can also pass information uh, from the uh, view back to the to the function. For instance, we might pass uh, any information we might want, maybe a string, right? Um, login function, uh, and uh, and we can take that uh, as an argument uh, in the in the function, right? Maybe a message, uh, which we can then um, Perhaps display. So if we if we uh, run that again, and we click on login, that function right is what comes from the from the view, right as an argument. Uh, or we might pass something a little more relevant, maybe uh, the username that was being pa that we that we passed in. Maybe we want to pass in the username and the password, right? Where the username notice that the username is a variable that we declared here, right in the view. And so locally in the view, we declared a uh, username. We might declare another, another uh, variable here, maybe the password variable, right? That is bound to this input field, uh, and we're passing them both to the function as two arguments. Yes. Uh, so that uh, here we might uh, display, uh, might re receive the username and password as argument, uh, and then use them together uh, to as alerts. In, as, as a part of an alert uh, box password, right? So that if we if we rerun this, 
and we have Alice, we do a login, right? We grab the username and the password, and we create the uh, the text, right? So, so look, it looks like the, the the communication between the client uh, and be, between the uh, view and the controller is become it's it's a uh, it's becoming more and more object oriented, right? The, the the data that flows between these two worlds uh, should be as object oriented as possible. Actually, the only thing you can pass uh, um, data between these two worlds are objects back and forth, uh, and uh, and the view can can declare not only just plain old uh, strings as as input. Um, you know, it, could, it could get a little more sophisticated, right? It could declare variables that are not, that are not just single attributes, but entire objects. Uh, and we might say that uh, username is only one attribute of a larger user object, right? Uh, so you can declare ent entire objects with their own attributes, right? Uh, so you might have a, a user dot username, uh, and then declare that uh, this password uh, is part of the same object. Right, so user dot password, user dot username, are two attributes of a larger user object. Right, so that the login function can be a little more object oriented. Right, can pass in the user object. Yes. Right, so that uh, on the other side we might uh, receive the user objects and use them uh, more in an object oriented fashion. Yes. Everyone okay? Yes. Uh, no, we're we're making these ver uh, attributes and uh, as we go along, right, from scratch. Yeah, but, uh, so you don't have to declare class Nope. Yeah, yeah, especially in JavaScript. In JavaScript, creating objects is as trivial as you know declaring uh, a couple curly brackets, and we'll see in a minute. Yep. Yes. They're they're undefined. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, I, I, ideally, you want to um, uh, collect uh, data at uh, at its highest uh, level of, of abstraction, right? And only use uh, the uh, the lower level of abstraction when you need to render something. Uh, but uh, you want to be as generic and general as possible. Yes. Yeah. Uh, always to deal, you know, to deal with complexity. Right? It's easier to think about user as an object as opposed to as indivi its individual's attributes. Right? So that's why we create abstractions. Right? We, we collect uh, different uh, data that is um, somehow related to each other, and we create buckets. Right? And then we create bigger buckets, right? bigger buckets as we go. We are animals that are, we are abstraction animals, right? We have been abstracting our way <laughs> through history uh, towards a singularity. Uh, and so this, this works just the same, right? Uh, if, we, um, if we render this, right, we, uh, it, it's grabbing that object right? and, uh, and then sending it over to the login uh, function. Everybody okay? Are still with me? Um, all right. So, so there it is. So we have a, a, a logging control. Here you might have a, 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 a um, um, you know, some logic that would go along and check to see if this user uh, has, uh, exists, right? If this username and password uh, exist. Uh, and if it's, uh, if it's valid, then uh, perhaps we might let this person navigate to the next page, yes? Uh, so somewhere we would need to declare a list of uh, valid users, uh, and I believe I provided that as a um, uh, as a, as an entry point as as data for you to play around with in the third assignment, which we haven't yet taken a look at. Um, but uh, I think we gave you a, a list of of valid users that we can use as a um, um, for you know, as mock data, as test data. So we, have, we might have a var set of users uh, uh, as an array of users, and uh, and here's a very simple uh, array of objects using the JSON uh, object notation. Uh, JSON is um, um, J 
JSON is um, the JavaScript uh, object notation, meaning a textual representation of objects uh, that is JavaScript compatible. Uh, you know, arrays are just square brackets, and objects are just curly brackets. Right? And uh, each cur and, and curly brackets, uh, being an object, you have uh, any number of attributes. Each object has an attribute. Here's an ID attribute, a username attribute, a password attribute, first name, last name, and whatnot. Uh, and then you have values for each one of those attributes. Right? So basically, in JavaScript, an object is just a collection of attributes with their values. Name value pairs, name value pair, name value pairs. Yes? Okay, that's basically a JavaScript object. Uh, so a validation here might be, in the login page, might be to iterate over the, uh, the users, right? Uh, saying, um, you know, var you in users. And as I iterate, as I iterate, uh, I might look for the user. Might say, you know, if uh, so, var user equal users uh, sub u. Uh, if you're coming from Java, you might expect that u is actually the instance object. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, in JavaScript, that's not the case. U is just a an index. Right, so it would be, so if you want to have the actual user, uh, you have to use it as an index to retrieve it from that position in the array. Yeah, so careful, right? if you're coming from .NET or Java, you know, don't make that mistake. Uh, so there, we have the user object. Um, and um, you know, if uh, the user dot, if, uh, oh wait, now we have two users here, right? Now we have two users. <laughs> Uh, so maybe this will be a local user. So if user dot uh, username matches uh, user dot username, and um, user dot password uh, matches user dot password and uh, password. Uh, if both match, then we have a valid user. Yes. Uh, so maybe we might say, um, maybe we might uh, display a welcome uh, uh, message. Maybe we'll say scope uh, welcome, uh, welcome uh, user. We might say the user. Uh, so we're sending uh, to the, uh, we're sending over to the, uh, uh, to the, um, we're, we're, we're uh, binding a user object on a, HTML on a variable, and this variable should be available on the on the HTML side, right? And uh, and we're going to treat it as a as an object. We can uh, we can uh, display it somewhere. Let's see where can we display it. Maybe we can display it up here. Uh, welcome, welcome user. Uh, and uh, so that if we if we render this and we match, so Alice has what password? Let's see. I don't remember. Alice has, oh, same, username and password are the same, Alice and Alice. So this would be Alice and Alice, we say login. Notice that that object is being rendered right above us. There it is. Uh, notice that it's being rendered in raw JSON format. See that? Uh, because that's really what it is. Underscore user is just this raw JSON object right there. Uh, we could be a little more a little more finesse and display maybe only the username, username, right? So if we re-render, uh, we have Alice and Alice. Uh, there's Alice, right? Uh, or we might be a little more. We, can, we could use a uh, maybe an alert box in um, in a, a, a Bootstrap alert box, uh, alert. Uh, maybe an alert info, which is blue alert info and display that user and we could say welcome and then the username or welcome back right uh, so uh, so welcome back is blank because there is no user but uh, if I log in it says uh, welcome back Alice uh, although it's kind of silly to show the message 
if there is no user. Uh, so uh, Angular provides uh, a wide array of attributes that allow you to show content or, or hide content based on uh, various, um, various logic. You can say ng show, so only show, right? Show this only if uh, the following expression uh, is true, right? Or as we say in JavaScript, as long as it's truthy. Uh, truth, truthy is a uh, it's a little vague, more vague than truth. Uh, it's not fake news. Uh, it's a it's something that is not false. Wait, uh, it's not falsy. <laughs> so truthy is something that is not falsy. Uh, so so basically, it's something that is not false. It's not zero. It's not empty. It's not undefined. It's not empty string. Uh, so it's a lot of ways of not being falsy, you know, something. So, so for instance, we could say if welcome user. So welcome user, uh, just, you know, when you first uh, load the page, welcome user is undefined, right? So it's not truthy. Undefined is not truthy. So the, the, the message is not displayed, right? So, so there is. It's not displayed. It's not even part of the DOM. It's not, uh, actually, no. It is part of the DOM. It's just hidden, hidden. Uh, so if I say Alice, Alice, right, it shows the, the message when, when this, that's truthy. That makes sense? Everybody okay? Right? Um, so yeah, so I, I guess we, we've reached the uh, limit of what we could do with the login page. Uh, ideally, this would actually navigate us to uh, the profile page, right, if, this, if we successfully na uh, logged in, right? And to be able to do that, we need to leave this page and go on to the next page, the profile page, right? But I've been selling you the idea that we don't want to leave a page. We want to just load one page and never leave that page, yes? Uh, so how do we do that? We want to navigate away from this page and show you some other content, but with never actually leaving the page. So how do we do that? Uh, so to do that, we're going to need to introduce a little more uh, of the Angular library, right? Uh, we're going to need to introduce routing, right? And so that's going to be the next topic. <laughs>